Hunter and the Beast sees the Hunt's Marshal, Marcus Wolfhart, expand Imperial interests into the intimidating wilderness of Lustria. For the first time, the incomparable Empire are playable in the Vortex campaign, but this Empire plays very Huntsman differently. Of the Empire. Do your worst. Isolated and uncomfortably far from home, Marcus is reliant on supplies from the Empire of Man. Perceived threat of the overseas conflict will dictate the quality and quantity of reinforcements provided by Emperor Franz, as he juggles the demands and politics of the Elector Counts alongside your campaign abroad. While stories of conquering countless hordes of foreign creatures will boost your agenda back home, raising the urgency of your reinforcements, it will also embolden the local inhabitants, as the same stories provide ever-escalating incentives to annihilate the foreign threat. As you can see here, each hostility level has a negative effect on Wolfhart's campaign, but is also a measure of his aggression against the Lizardmen. As he ascends through the hostility levels, reinforcements are dispatched more frequently via the Imperial Supply System. The strength of these reinforcements is dictated by the Emperor's Mandate Bar here, which reflects a less reactionary, more long-term visualization of your progress in the eyes of the Emperor. Marcus has every reason to hunt and kill beasts, posing any threat to settlements of man, after his home turn of Drakenberg was obliterated by a rogue giant. However, he will need to regulate his vengeance if he is to navigate his precarious situation behind enemy lines. Wolfhart's ambitious expedition into Lustria will put him on a collision course with a wider variety of foes than ever before. It is advisable to keep a matching assortment of allies, mutual tools for survival in an unforgiving new world. Friendly faces and old friends are few and far between in these inhospitable lands, but those faces that can survive here can become incredibly powerful. Don't read everything here if you want to avoid spoilers. Scattered throughout Lustria are four outstanding hunters, each with their own methods, glories, and tragedies. You may attempt to track them down and acquire their services to aid in the expedition. By guiding the development of each hunter, you earn their trust and help them mature into the finest hunters in any world, old or new. Assisting their Lustrian journey will reward them with new traits and powerful abilities, and although they are not required to complete Wolfhart's campaign, they deliver major benefits to the Hunts Marshal's expedition. Aside from the hunters, there are still options for building a support network on Lustrian shores. The Empire's fledgling New World colonies are only a short trip across the water, but without your support, their value as an ally is limited. Removal of the Savage Norskins should give them a little bit of room to breathe and grow as an ally. Expect even more inconvenience from the even more savage Blue Viper tribe who will hamper the growth of all nearby factions until extinguished. To the east, you might only see vast amounts of salty undeath and sand. Across the Southern Straits can offer one of the only relatively nearby safe havens. That's if you can evade the infamous pirate Mad Mullitson and dislodge Arkin the Black before he consumes all. The perilous journey south will provide you access to resources which can help kindle a trade network with the equally isolated forces of Teclas and his Order of Lawmasters, as well as Hugrim Redaxe of the Spine of Sotek Dwarfs. But there's no shortage of bad guys standing in the way. I've received reports of a short bearded warm blood raiding Lizardman supply lines in the northern spine of Sotek. So I'm going to make a beeline there as soon as I've secured my borders. Let's fast forward and see how I got on. It was all going so well. First, I noticed the New World colonies weren't doing so hot, chaos corruption melting them away with slow, agonizing certainty. I may have forgotten my place and overstretched trying to fuel our new Dwarven Hunters' enthusiasm for invention. They came from all sides. It didn't stop with the Lizards. Everyone wanted a pop. When my scouts spotted the Children of the Old Ones approaching, I knew they wouldn't stop until they had taken my best men and destroyed my most sophisticated equipment. With supplies so scarce and my settlement in tatters, a costly battle would seriously derail the expedition. I had to hit the eject button. With a campaign like this one, it's always smart to have at least one eye on self-preservation. After scouring Lustria for the famous hunters lurking in its corners, I sent my fastest man, Ralph, the new Huntsman General Lord type, on a wrecking mission east across the Great Ocean to settle in some modest ruins situated in the Southlands. I still have scores to settle in Lustria, not least in pursuit of giving my hunters some closure in their own personal stories, 
but survival comes first. There are plenty of lizards to exterminate here, lands my men can thrive in, and a few more friendly faces, making securing my borders considerably more manageable. These abominable lizards back in Lustra will take years to figure out where we've gone. There's only one problem. This place is infested with Tomb Kings. Despite my reticence to risk my prize supplies in Lustria, I can't miss this opportunity to make so many friends on a new continent. With the element of surprise and many turns worth of stockpiled supplies on the line, the hunt is on for every Tomb King's worst enemy, Arkan the Black. for the Hunts Marshal. I've no time for human baggage. The move paid off. In felling the Lich King, Wolfhart earns the Ark and the Blackens trade, granting him some favor with the rest of the Tomb Kings. If it weren't for my investment in the Purge of the Fell technology, which only takes one turn but has a hefty 7k price tag, my expedition would be limping now. The gunpowder focus I've taken in my approach to the tech tree might have helped out too allowing me to rout Arkan's skellies before they could even get within striking distance. With the same stone, I also endeared myself to the terrorized human factions in the area, ensuring more stability here than I ever had in Lustria. Approach! What is your business here? Speaking of Lustria, there are no celebrations as my lands are picked apart by the vultures. It's about time I showed you the full breadth of the Imperial Armory, as I jump forward and show you the late game diversity of the Empire unit pool. These mortar war wagons may carry less ammo than standard mortars, but more than make up for it by being able to stay one step ahead of melee combatants. The Regiment of Renown variant features a Hellblaster volley gun. While shorter range than a standard Hellblaster, it can pump rounds into approaching troops until the last second. Although our progress towards fulfilling the Emperor's mandate has been damaged, our service, guile, and bravery has been recognized back home. We will continue to be increasingly trusted with a greater caliber of reinforcements with some powerful province-specific units also airdropping in in exchange for prioritizing demands of that province's elector count in all new political dilemmas. These units provide too many diverse sources of strength to be balanced for custom and multiplayer battle, but are also unlockable in Empire's Mortal Empires campaign via a completely different method. Follow us on Twitch and Twitter, where we'll be showing and sharing the latest gameplay on the Empire rework for the Mortal Empires campaign. Unfortunately, the damned lizards have some unheard of new tools at their disposal to match as they attempt to erase every trace of my presence on Lustria. These hard-hitting monstrous infantry are great all-rounders. With high weapon strength and magical attacks, they can plow through against a greater variety of foes than standard Proxigors. If you thought Carnosaurs the apex predator of Lustria, think again. With breathtaking weapon damage and high armor, these towering walls of teeth and fury are versatile elite killing melee behemoths. I don't want to spoil your own playthroughs too much, but I'm going to drop into one of my final battles so I can show you why you're going to need so many of the Empire's finest. Franz will expect a trophy in exchange for his continued investment overseas. Nakai the Wanderer, the spirit of the jungle, is one of the last remaining crop scores of the legendary first spawning. Even that intro does not do the sheer size of this creature justice, and his head on a plate would represent the ultimate fulfillment of Franz's mandate. Hunting him and his servants unprepared is a near suicide mission. And each of the four hunters we track down in Lustria can give us a massive advantage in bringing him down once and for all. A shield sundering arrow blessed by Isha and Kurnus from a wood elf hunter. A list of favors that can be called in thanks to a well-known lineage from an empire witch hunter. Each has a part to play in bringing down the spirit of the jungle.
Hunter and the Beast is available for 10% off until Thursday the 11th of September. Catch us on our 5-hour release day stream to see Nakai the Wanderer's campaign live.